Uh, we come from the Czech Republic, Idea Statica, and we're happy to be here. It's, uh, it's uh, for some time that we've been working with colleagues from IBS, uh, helping engineers how to work better. Uh, if you just quickly tell me who's a, uh, who's a structural engineer uh, here, yes, all right, and a fabricator, more of a precast, all right, all right, all right, awesome, thanks. Uh, so we've prepared a, a lot of content for you. Uh, we'll do explanations. We will mix them with examples. Uh, we'll start with steel, and then we go then we go into concrete. Uh, we will show what we've uh, already have for some time. We will show the new stuff from the from the new version, and uh, explain all the BIM workflows. Okay. I guess there are some users of Tecla. Right, robot, blue ball. So uh, we'll, we'll take a uh, look into that. A little bit about us. Uh, we are based in the Czech Republic. Uh, that's where the software is, uh, is developed, and it's uh, it's developed by a group of people that uh, has been uh, developing software for structural engineers uh, for some time, uh, and uh, previously also in other companies. So we got a mix of IT, uh, IT and engineering guys. Uh, behind this, okay, and uh, Idea Statica is different from uh, from uh, other programs. It's a software dedicated to details, to connections, beams, cross sections. We are not modeling the whole structure. We've been around for eight years. Uh, go to uh, something over 2,000 licenses worldwide. We work a lot with the universities uh, because we need to validate if it just calculates right. So um, uh, we got uh, partner universities all around Europe to do the verification with us. And because we don't do the whole model, we need to be linked to what you have. So, uh, so we've linked Idea Statica to now more than 15 applications uh, uh, out there. And just to give you an idea, it's 35 people uh, in our business working on this, both in development, testing, documentation, support. And then we have local partners, Arvidas and, and the team, who, uh, who do it in your language <laughs> and also in your time zone. It's, just, it's incredible, but there's a plus one difference between Brno, Czech Republic and here, even though it's just not that far away. You as structural engineers, you have tools. And you've got good, cool, good tools. Uh, they are called Final Element Analysis Programs, or CAE. And uh, they're great. They have tradition, uh, they model the structure, analyze the forces, and it's, uh, it's a good tool to use. The thing is that the trickiest parts of structures, especially with uh, growing complexity we have today, are the details. So most of the problems that engineers have to deal with are related to a particular difficult joint, or a, there's an offset, there's different angle, there's loading, there's a solar... Uh, uh, photovoltaic plant on the roof and all, all those changes that, 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 uh, that can be there. And you are smart people, so you always find a way. But usually that means spending more time on it or just put more material there. Americans say overkill. Let's overkill it. Let's put like more steel, more concrete just to be on the safe side. So, uh, so that's why we've created something that uh, only uh, is focused on these details, on connections, beams, uh, uh, cross sections. And we complement what you have. Uh, we are uh, not competing with, uh, with, the, with the providers of the big solutions. We are uh, complement to them. And we do it in a way that it all works together. So you get a solution that uh, is linked to what you have, and it has uh, uh, all the documentation support that you are used to uh, for your projects. And your projects are not easy. We know that. That uh, there's a lot of pressure, time, money, and first of all, the safety, right? Uh, especially when something happens, everybody's just asking questions like, "How is it possible?" Right? So uh, safety means in our industry to comply with the design codes whether it is uh, American, Eurocode, Canadian, and that's quite thorough. The building codes are very explicit what, uh, what needs to be done or what should not be done. And you basically get two cases, uh, one the standard, when we are in steel, we get standard joints, the easy ones, 
and the non-standard. And for the standard, there's a pretty clear way. Uh, there are design guides, pretty fine examples, experience of your colleagues. For the non-standard, there's also a way, which usually means putting together a scientific model and some ANSYS or application like that. A lot of Excel spreadsheet, right? Excel spreadsheet is a big friend. Good engineering judgment, estimation. And sometimes, to be honest, it's just better to avoid using something non-standard and, uh, 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 and do it in a different way. Which leads to a, a sad truth that even though in an average steel structure there is 70% easy joints and 30% difficult ones, at least, we spend the time vice versa. We spend most of our time on the difficult joints. So we're going to show you a tool that checks all the steel joints connections and do it in minutes, whether it is simple, medium, or devilishly complex. This is our customer probably the biggest company called Arup, uh, top three engineering offices around the world. They've been around for quite some time and they're a perfect example that they always find a way. They're, they've built the best skyscrapers around the world. Uh, this one is from London and they remember how complex it was 10 years ago when they had to do it because they just they had to do it. Now they, they can do this in minutes with Idea Statica. We're going to show that example later on uh, in a little bit more detail but right now we're jumping to the software and we're going to show you how to how to model design and code check this uh, this both plate to plate connection philip will you get that for us yeah okay so let me just open idea idea connection okay, i hope it's not in Czech language oh, like this let me just check the uh, change the language. Uh, to okay, I need to restart, and that will be it. Okay, so uh, I don't know how many of you are familiar with our previous version, but uh, since 9.0 version, we have redone uh, a lot of things in UI. And uh, this is quite a new uh, screen, which is basically some wizards, uh, so you can input uh, the joint very quickly. Uh, and uh, our example will be very uh, simple, so let me just find the most suitable uh, type, which will be, I think, this one. Of course, I can start with any or with uh, the general one, and uh, I, can, I can adjust it uh, to my final uh, wish. Uh, when I click on create a project, uh, this template will be loaded and we will do a few things with that. For example, we can uh, change the cross sections. So uh, we can change it for cross section B1 and we can uh, select from the library of cross sections, which are some hot rolled sections, welded, cold formed. There's not any limit in that. So let me go for I section, which will be 700 millimeters high. The flange will be 20 millimeters thick, uh, 400 millimeters wide, and uh, that's what I wanted. So when I click OK, you can see that it has been changed in the scene. And while I go for member B2, I can switch it just like that, because I will use the one which I defined uh, right now. Uh, I can of course set any angle, any offset which I want. There's another problem as well because we are not limited in a topology or a loading. And when I mention loading, we can go for a load effect. Actually I can define as many load effects as I want. Uh, it's just a matter of uh, calculation time, but it's very quick. So, and this is a basic example, so let me stick with just one load combination, so let's apply some tensile force, uh, then some shear force and bending moment like this. Okay. You can see the forces right here in the scene as well. Uh, okay, so we have some geometry, we have uh, the loadings, and what, what we need to do is uh, to uh, 
place some manufacturing operations or construct the whole joint. And the template already loaded uh, this uh, plate to plate connection. Some say it might be as well an end plate. And uh, we need to adjust a few parameters. So let me do that. Let's increase the thickness to 20 millimeters. Uh, let me change also the offset like that. We need some space uh, because we will do bigger welds so they fit in exactly like that. You can, you can see them here. Uh, so we have uh, double fillet welds. We, ha we can also have one side fillet, uh, butt weld and, and so on. Uh, and of course what I need to adjust is the, the bolts type. So let me just check the dimensions. Okay, so in this example we will use M24 and 10.9 grade, so like this. And we'll adjust the position, so minus 70, minus 110, one more. And then I will need the, uh, the columns, so minus 50 and minus 90 millimeters, like that. I mean, let me just change the view so you see that they are on the opposite side as well. Or, of course, I can use some transparent view and, and so on. Okay, so you have seen that in a matter of seconds I have defined my desired joint. I can hit, hit the calculate button, which will run the nonlinear calculation. And once it does all the iterations, we will get the results. And this is the first result which you can see. We call it traffic light. Uh, it's pretty obvious why we call it that, because you can see which parts of the joint are, let's say, not utilized so much. Below 60%, they are gray. Once they reach about 60%, you can see them as a green. We say it's kind of an optimal utilization. Uh, then parts uh, above 95%, they are orange. It means they are pretty much utilized, but still OK. And if my design is wrong and some part is exceeding the limits, you would see the red color. So you directly see which weld, which bolt and so on is not satisfying the checks. And if I want to see detailed results, all I need to do is go to the check tab. And now I can see uh, all the results. For instance, for plates, it can be interesting to see equivalent stress, right? And, and uh, maybe let me show it to this way. Uh, all these results uh, are covered by uh, final element analysis because of the robust model we, which we have behind it. And uh, as you can see, the end plates are actually deformed. So if I go for a bolt forces and want to see the bolt results, these forces are actually uh, considering the levering or the prying forces. <clears throat> uh, okay, so uh, the software uh, obtain uh, a shear force and the tensile force, and then we run the checks which you probably know from the code, right? So there are all the formulas and intermediate results for every bolt in the project, for every weld in the project. Uh, if we will have for every anchor and so on. Uh, if I want to see uh, the detailed results for any specific plate or, or bolt, I can see it right here. So if I click now on the weld, you can see the result for this particular weld. And of course, some of you may have seen, maybe I will change it like that, that there are actually bolts which bear no force. So if I order it like this, you can see these are unused bolts. We don't need them in our design. So we can make some pretty quick optimization. So let me just change the view uh, back to solid one. Yeah. So these are the ones which we want to, uh, to delete. Uh, so one, how do we do that? Uh, we go to the editor. And there we can raise, uh, pardon, like new one, but we can uh, delete them. So number seven, then number, okay, it was number five, which I wanted to delete as well, uh, nine, 11, uh, 20, 
Okay, 17, 19, 21, and 23, like this. And you can see in the window that it's applied. I can calculate again. Let's say it's optimized. We reduced the number of bolts about a third of them. And you can see that, see that we still satisfy the checks. And I'm quite happy with my design right now. So all I need to do is just print some report. So once it's done, uh, I can include, let's say, some pictures which I have done in the project. I can include formulas, for instance. I can switch on some theoretical background. And once I hit refresh, it will appear in my, in my report, which can be printed, uh, saved in the Word document, PDF, and so on. So you can see that there are all the informations about the cross-sections, geometry, load effects, all the checks which you have seen right now. And of course, I mentioned the formulas, and there is this theoretic background uh, at the end, if you wish to include it for an engineer who doesn't know idea. A second option is uh, when you need a bill of material, which can be summarized in a table with the drawings, or you can export it to uh, to the DXF file, or you can use our online viewer where we uh, actually can export it in a 3D DVG by Autodesk uh, solution. So uh, that was all from my side. Any Any questions for, for this example? Simple. So we've demonstrated how it works, and, and in this way we can uh, we can do any type of connection. And uh, you probably got that uh, idea that maybe scrap, scratch the modeling and uh, use what we model in TechLine. We'll, we'll, we'll show that. We'll show that too. Okay. <coughs> so with Idea Statica connection, you can do whether it is TD, uh, 2D, 3D, frame trusses, footing, uh, all types of connections that can uh, that can happen in a in a steel project. And what the code requires, whether it is uh, a backlink analysis for certain types of connections, of course, the stress and strain. Uh, very often, you need to classify the rigidity of the, of the connection. Uh, overall check. The, everything you need for, um, for uh, proving that the connection is either wrong or right. A okay. couple of examples. This is uh, one of the tower masks from Poland. Uh, wrong topology of bolts, you can see right away, uh, doesn't work, uh, just fix it in, uh, in uh, Idea Statica. Buckling is a topic. You can have a connection that works from the point of stress and strain, but when there is buckling, uh, the design is not safe. And this is one of the parts of the code which are most opaque, so uh, we are very clear what, what, what are the values, so you can, you can evaluate that add a stiffener in three seconds, as, as, as Philip showed, and, and make the design safe. Uh, again, uh, we can have um, a good connection from the point of stress and strain, but we can get ovalization. Uh, just when we understand how it works, we can cut the second U-pin example. In this example, get stiffness ten times higher in a in couple of seconds. Okay. Overall check for any types of, uh, uh, of joints. This is actually from from Heathrow Airport, from the new terminal, which is finally opened. Uh, so uh, idea was, was used there as well. And during the whole process, you know where you are. Uh, you can play with different uh, uh, options and know exactly when the joint is at its limits. And you can do any topology, load it in any directions, and still keep this process in minutes. Uh, not, uh, not in days or weeks in ANSYS and Excel spreadsheet. We launched this four years ago and right from the start we knew that uh, we have to test it uh, very properly because it, it was a new approach uh, because we've uh, created a new method called component-based final element model which uh, is not entirely new we said, okay, uh, the standard approach to connection design is the equations, the component method. And engineers use final elements for the whole model of the structure. So we said, okay, let's combine them. 
So uh, we actually use finding elements to model the, the stresses, the forces, and then we apply the standard checks defined in the code. And this allows us to do uh, all types of them. The first level of testing was that we took all the standard examples defined by the code, or the, the design guides and examples, and we recalculated them in Idea Statica. That was kind of that was kind of quick, and we got the same results. When it comes to complex connections, how do you verify them? So, so there, uh, our cooperating universities, they spend years on examples in uh, ANSYS, Abacus, uh, a lot of Excel spreadsheets, a lot of uh, hand calculations, uh, modeling them and then comparing results uh, to Idea Statica. Again, same results. A lot of live testing took place. Uh, all the research is published at our websites, articles, and most importantly, we got this. Uh, I might have it. We got this verification book, uh, which you can see here in the first edition, uh, published two years ago. I, I have the second extended edition because it's very popular, and this uh, summarizes 25 most important benchmark case studies uh, the universities did, uh, showing that uh, the uh, method inside and the calculation capacity is, is reliable, safe. <coughs> So in the background, there's a little bit of science. There was a lot of research also before we get this done. What you see, as Philip showed, is a way to work with joints, add plates, bolts, choose templates. Uh, with this wizard we have, you can select from roughly 300 <coughs> topologies right away and, and have them designed. And also edit with, the, with some in initial loading. You just, you just adjust that. So you can do hundreds of connections, not even in seconds, not in minutes. And then you, when you need something very complex, you pick the closest template you can find, and then you continue from that. You just change offsets, add more members if needed, uh, and just get, get your job done. This is the biggest UK uh, steel contractor, content engineering, heavy user of Tecla. Uh, they use the workflow, and they're pushing this this product or this workflow to the limits. And they're also pushing TechLine us to uh, make the link even better all the time. A little bit annoying. All right, uh, quick update on how much, uh, how much this actually costs. Uh, Idea Statica connection is, uh, is 4,000 euros for, for a single license, uh, and that's lifetime. And we also have uh, subscriptions or rentals uh, which, which are time limited. Okay. And we encourage you to not take our word for granted. Try it on your own. There's a 14-day trial uh, that uh, you can use to uh, explore the product in full, no limitations. And uh, if we don't deliver, if you buy our software and uh, it's just not OK for you, we got a two-month money-back guarantee. And we're happy that no one has used it uh, ever so far. Workflows. Now we're uh, getting to a phase how, we, how it all works together. So we got uh, uh, two types of uh, uh, BIM links. One is with the CAT or BIM programs, Tecla Structures Advanced Steel. We'll show how to select the node there, uh, export it to Idea Statica. Of course, we don't have loads in Tecla, so we're going to input them manually and, uh, and check them. The second workflow uh, is from uh, the analytical packages, all the robots, SAPs, STARTS, SIA. When we select the node, send it to Idea Statica, where we design it, and then check it. And what is new, uh, what we can do is to merge this also. So we have prepared an example that we're going to be working with the model in one of the analytical packages, RFM being the case, and Tecla Structures, and Idea Static, and we're going to put it together. All right. Okay. <coughs> so, for instance, let me start with uh, export from Tecla Structures. Uh, so we have the same model in both of them. Uh, I think the workflow was that uh, our partner used RFM to model this thing, then exported it to Tecla, where he defined, for instance, this joint. Uh, we integrated IDEA into Tecla, so there is a new tab on the ribbon where I can run the commands 
for uh, a manager for the joins. So you can see we have currently uh, we have currently three codes to choose from, and more will come. Uh, so let me just start with some basic example in the euro code. And let me just select uh, three things. First one is the connection point. It means the node, which will correspond to the, to the one in RFM. Then I need to specify the, uh, the members, which are connected. And then I'll just drag over it and say these are all the parts from, for a connection. Once I hit the spacebar for a third time, everything will be automatically exported to IDEA Statica and you will see the exported project in a few seconds right here and you can see that I don't need to define any of these manufacturing operations again um, but as has been mentioned I don't have any load effects here I can add them manually I can import them from Excel spreadsheet but what we wanted to do in this example was to uh, import these uh, load effects from another uh, finite element analysis software. So let me go for RFM, where you can see the exactly same model, which I mentioned was exported to Tackle. So it also integrated uh, IDEA into RFM, and the process will be almost the same. It asks for the node. So the node is here, and yeah, select members. So these are the ones. Click OK, and the export should uh, start the wizard, where I can define the name. It doesn't matter that much right now. Uh, of course, I can, for instance, merge uh, the continuous members. So. For this case, let me just merge this horizontal one. And I click on connection design. It will export the whole geometry and load effects. It means all these combinations which are defined in RFM. I think there are five of them. Yes. So RC125 here. You can see they have different values all in the scene. But I don't have any manufacturing operations here. What I can do is go back to my example, which I exported, and say transfer the loads from another project. Connection import, RFM connection 77. And once I do that, the load effects appear here with all the uh, operations from TechPa. All I need to do is to hit the calculate button. Of course, it will take some time as I'm, as I'm investigating few uh, five uh, combinations at one time. But uh, as it does not require any of my uh, skills to, to uh, make, make it an idea again, it's pretty simple and smooth workflow. Uh, and also, we won't have the time. Oh, maybe one, one more thing. Now I see why it's calculated so long. Uh, these are actually the bolt one bolted connections, which should be probably uh, fixed on the other side as well. So I need to change the model type for uh, the bracings, uh, not for member one, but for member two and two five, like this. Uh, so we prevent in this way to become a mechanism. Now it will calculate much much quicker because we would obtain the results where it would be torn apart. Okay, so what I wanted to mention uh, before I interrupted myself was that uh, once we export from RFM and we face some change in the project, uh, we have done all these joins. And we can, let's say, change the loads or position of loads, recalculate the internal forces, and we can just click on update the connection and uh, it should remember all these manufacturing operations which are defined and just recalculate them. So we uh, not, do not only export a new connection, we also remember them and we can update them and recalculate in a very easy way. And of course, as you have seen in this manager, now it's calculating, you can have the list, full list of your exported connections and you can play with them. 
So we are at 60% of the uh, of the analysis. 50%, and let's hope in a few seconds we'll have 100% for five combinations. So again, you see that we satisfy the checks. You can go through them, maybe to obtain the exactly same picture as you have seen in the presentation. Uh, okay, so. okay, like this. All right, so you have checked the connection with using of BIM in Tecla and RFM as well. We work, I think you have mentioned, with many of these packages. Oh, there was a brief, awesome. brief use case. Okay, is this useful? <laughs> Great. <laughs> Perfect. And we're adding new BIM links every release. It's, uh, it's a big topic. And it's, uh, we're very happy that we are not alone in that, that uh, the key uh, companies in the industry help, helps us with that. It's especially Trimble, Tecla. Uh, we are a uh, technology partner of Tecla, uh, also with Autodesk. And so we cooperate how to build these links uh, because it's kind of intimate that we need to enter our models. So it's good that we're working on that together. And. Uh, uh, the users can take advantage of that. This is one of the biggest uh, Tecla users in Spain uh, and, ve and very uh, innovative engineering uh, office which uh, use the workflow Tecla idea to do sometimes a little bit crazy stuff but they can do it and they can do it fast. Uh, idea static connection is used by structural engineers, fabricators, uh, the biggest names in the industry, whether it is uh, in Europe or US, Arup, Eco, Mercadis, Rumble, uh, Biro Hapol, Wagner Biro, so in the US, uh, in Canada, uh, to make the connection design workflows better. And all those customers, they get technical support, uh, not directly from me or from Philip, but from our local teams, like, uh, like Intellig Intelligent BIM Solutions here. Uh, so you get uh, a level of support. We're ha very happy that 95% of all what we receive around the world we, s we solve uh, 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 in a couple of days maximum. And uh, that, that statistic based on 7,000 tickets in, uh, from last year's. Uh, you've seen the, uh, the modeling, you've also seen the report, and that's basically what you need uh, to hand over. So uh, different, uh, different design codes, various set of materials, ma materials cross-sections, uh, get uh, uh, a DVG if necessary, uh, everything you need to, uh, to finish the project. One of the biggest engineering offices in the world, Tractable Engineering, and this is their uh, Belgium office, uh, which has time and capacity to look into solutions, so they've tested uh, Ideastatic a lot before, uh, before they, uh, they purchased it and compared it to their in-house tools, you know, that the, old, the Excel spreadsheets, the empirical tests, and were satisfied. Uh, so uh, we are very particular in referencing the code and making sure that you can check manually all the, uh, all the equations if you want and still do it in a way that uh, this is not robot structural analysis. This doesn't take you two weeks to learn how to do your first model. Most of the people uh, that start using Ideostatica, when they get a trial, spend 30 minutes on it, try to do one, two, three connections, you will see the potential if it's, just, uh, if it's okay for you or not. So we are not asking you to test for 12 days in a row, we're asking for 30 minutes. Uh, yes, it's uh, at the end, uh, uh, if you are the boss or you're going to convince the boss uh, about the software, it's about uh, a rate of return. Our engineering is expensive. We're very happy that uh, Ideostatica can repay itself on, uh, on the first of first three projects in uh, the savings of those hours. 
some more work uh, from uh, uh, around the world, what we do. We've mentioned that, uh, that Arup case uh, at the beginning. This is actually uh, this is a panorama of London. So the, the one in the middle, that's Leadenhall Tower. Okay, that's, a, that's a skyscraper that was done 10 years ago by Arup, and they had to design connections like this, tens, hundreds of them in that project. And they were, guys from Arup were very uh, keen to share the workflow, how they did it at that time. Okay, so this is what they did. Initial model in Tecla, then transition model in a, in a software called Rhino, uh, do the meshing in Ansa, uh, then some tricks in Excel spreadsheet. Use a global analysis tool for uh, for the uh, for the final elements. Then feed it into Nestran, and then do some uh, some more coding on that. And they were able to get results or connections like this. They were able to get results uh, at that time. They are able to get results now. The results are very similar and. Uh, the only difference is it's just not weeks, it's, it's minutes, hours maximum for these complex connections. It's an interesting example from UK when, when Arup was assigned to do a forensic analysis on a malfunctioning connection on a construction site, which uh, looks suspicious, right, <laughs> uh, at the first glance. Uh, when they quickly modeled it in ID Aesthetica and loaded it properly, uh, it become very clear that uh, the that, uh, connection is just falling apart and they were able to prove it to the uh, general contractor and uh, uh, convince them that it has to be fixed. Okay. Uh, more examples, connections like this, or uh, uh, tubular ones. This is from, I believe, Revit. Uh, another example which uh, demonstrates it's, it's not limited to, uh, to any topology or type. Uh, very often we have to deal with uh, anchoring. Uh, to be honest, the, the, con the concrete block of a steel connection is uh, one of its trickiest part. It's uh, where the code is also very uh, complex and opaque and there's, uh, 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 there's a lot to it, how to check anchors, all the, all the, all the parameters. So we're happy that uh, we can give a clear answer about the anchoring as well. And we're going to show it on on this on this example. Okay. Oh, it's my turn again. Let me switch to the software. Uh, where should I go here? For instance, well, let me run a new project. And I'm again in the wizard where I will start with the class of anchoring. Uh, I will want some HEB, so this first one seems like a most familiar for me. Okay, so uh, which cross? Ah, okay. Sorry, that's my mistake. Uh, you should see my screen. Okay, sure. Thanks. Okay, so let me see we, what cross section do we have. It's AGB 300. It's ex exactly the one which I wanted, and I will just move it slightly. I will explain it in, in a second. Uh, it's, it has a purpose. But is, in this example, I will use two more members. So let me add the first one, which will be HEB 200. So I will look it up in the library. Like that, of course, like this. And this is actually the purpose why I, why I do that, because uh, the forces from my analysis are obtained up to this node, not to the base plate. And now uh, I want a third member, which will be some bracing. So the last member, which will have the pitch at 45 degrees. And it will be some square hole section. K, 80 on 80 on 4. Are you here? So, <coughs> this is what I wanted. And now let's start with the definition of the loads. So, uh, I will specify some compression force for the column, some compression force. 
uh, pardon, for uh, for the bracing, like this, and maybe some small tensile force for the horizontal beam, some uh, shear force, and some bending moment like this. So we have quite general, <coughs> generally uh, loaded joint. And so let's start with the modification of the first uh, operation, which was already loaded by the template, which is a base plate operation, which also got the concrete block right there. We will adjust the thickness to 25 millimeters, and let's make the offsets from the cross section bigger, so 120 for both directions. Also, we will change the size of the anchors and also the grate, like this. Uh, we can make them uh, longer, so let's say 400 millimeters, and uh, move them maybe after we put some uh, rectangular washer plate. And as I mentioned, we will move them slightly to the sides, like this. Now we need to adjust the weld, so both for webs and flanges, 6mm double-sided fillets. And uh, we want to also adjust the concrete block. So at first let me change the offset. We want to have it bigger because of the concrete cone breakout and also deeper, 800mm. Uh, and the last two options are for the uh, special uh, cases. Default one is uh, set the <coughs> that shear force will be transferred by the friction, which is quite common. But if you want, there they can be uh, transferred by uh, anchors, or we can input some shear lock. So you can see right th right there. There can be again any cross section which you want. So there are many possibilities. You can anchor the, the one member to more blocks, you can, you can anchor more members to one block, and, and so on. Uh, okay, uh, we have connected the column to the, uh, to the concrete block. Now we need to connect the horizontal member to the column. So to do that, let me uh, add one more operation. In this case, some end plate. And member M, pardon, member M2 will be connected to column, and the thickness will be 60 millimeters. Also, I will change the the height of this end plate because I will use exactly the same plate to connect uh, the bracing via uh, connecting plate. So let me apply 250 millimeters offset to, to the top and maybe 10 millimeters to the sides for the welds, like this. Uh, now let's change the bolts, which are connecting the end plate. So, M20, 10.9 great. Again, I will use my mobile to cover the offsets for the layers, and yeah, minus 50 if I see correctly. Okay, and okay, it's like yeah, this is what I wanted. Uh, and I want to make the weld smaller because now they have thickness 7.5 millimeters. I want them to have 6 millimeters, and I'm, I'm happy with the double sided fillets. So that's how I connected M2 member, and now I want to uh, connect M3. That's why I will use operation, connecting plate. And uh, member M3, like this. I will relate that to, oh, pardon, relate that to member M2, and also to the uh, end plate, like that. So I, I, now I will define uh, these uh, dimensions from the intersection of these two uh, entities. 
So width will be 180 and the depth 250, like that. And now you can see that I need to move the, the start of that connection. So the position will be 460 millimeters. I will change the alignment. So you will see how I will make a chamfer here. And also uh, I need to uh, here, where are you? Okay, I will change the double fillet for uh, for the tongue and adjust the sizes. So six millimeters, four and four. Also, I can change the the bolts because I don't want <laughs> one bolt is not enough in many cases. Also, I will use maybe I can use the one I defined M20. 40 and 50 millimeters for positions like that, right? And as I mentioned, I want to make a chamfer, so I, I need to go for an editor and make a chamfer on corner number two, value of 70. Once I hit OK, you can see it in the scene that it had been cut. Okay. Uh, the connection could calculate now because everything is connected, but actually in, in cases like that we would use stiffeners uh, to, oh, pardon, remember, let me delete this one, an operation, stiffeners, which I will specify on a member column. I can relay that to member M2 for both, let's say, well, six millimeters and the thickness 12 millimeters. And now I'm happy with the design as it's uh, more stiff enough uh, in matter of anchoring. Once I hit the calculate button, again, I have run the nonlinear analysis. And uh, although the join is calculated according to your code, for the assessment of, of anchors, we use uh, ETEC uh, with the annex C and that these are the formulas which you will see in the report in a few seconds. So, last few iterations. Okay, it, uh, it plastifies a little, so obviously you will see some plastic strains in the results. And uh, you can see that some of the anchors are not satisfying the, you know, the checks, so we can see them as a red. So these are probably compressed ones, these are the ten, ten, uh, one, one under a tension. If I want to check them, for instance, anchors, we haven't been through them. So you can see that, for instance, in that case, uh, we have big uh, tensile force and we actually exceed the concrete cone breakout in, in this case. So you can see there are formulas to calculate according to ETEC the concrete cone breakout which also considers a group of them, the close edge of the concrete block and, and so on. Uh, the other thing w which was not there is a concrete block. So for instance you can see these are the results uh, for uh, the for a concrete block and the stress in concrete which can be seen and also the assessment of shear which we have set to friction we can see that this one is sufficient enough you can see the utilization and transfer and all these things will be again printed in report so once I go here you will see that it's exactly the same as in previous examples like this and of course you can see if it satisfies or not so and if you look here uh, okay, I haven't specified the formulas but it's all there and there is also the reference for the code which it's assessed according to so all the time you can see the reference and check it okay great I'll switch back to presentation it's your turn awesome so this can be used in a lot of real-life projects, uh, some more of them. 
to give you a perspective, uh, you know, we are we have an office in the UK in London, and we're happy that 40% of uh, the top UK steel fabricators are already using it. And fabricators, especially in the UK, are the uh, suspicious bunch of people. So they uh, they really uh, dig into it, and they're comparing with their in-house in-house tools. There's always a, a guy or two who's been doing connection design for 15 years, and uh, he knows best. Right? <laughs> this access spreadsheet. So. so it was not easy, uh, but uh, but we got there. And. Uh, one uh, engineering office from UK, uh, Mott McDonald, they were assigned to uh, do this magnificent project in, uh, in Jakarta, this uh, multifunctional velodrome, and um, uh, they shared the, the workflow with us, how they did it. On the next slide, there's a lot of Autodesk software, so, so don't get offended. Okay, so they, what they did is uh, build a, um, a BIM model in Revit, do the structural analysis, uh, the, the global modeling in uh, in robot, uh, do the, uh, the detailing in AutoCAD slash advanced steel, then also all the other other tools for uh, uh, for NEP and, and all that. And for connection design up top, you can see idea static. So uh, we fit into uh, into this uh, complex set of tools to get a project like this done. And uh, idea static played an important part of it to make connections like this possible at a reasonable time schedule, reasonable uh, cost uh, effectivity. Right. Uh, back to UK, uh, this is uh, uh, another typical, not that often, but the very handy place for Ideostatica war tanks. They, they have these uh, supporting structures and it's uh, very important to understand what, uh, what the connections are actually doing. So with all the visualization you can see uh, what the connection is doing uh, and how it is affected. A metropolitan hospital in uh, um, also in the, in the UK. It's a, a very uh, forward-looking structure with connections like this. Uh, which uh, required an advanced approach to, uh, to connection design. We actually, I think three months ago, we're, we're doing a regular webinars, we call them Connect Connection Wednesdays. Every, two we every second Wednesday we have a webinar when usually a customer shares a project and we also look into the most interesting question we get to our help desk in the, from the last two, three weeks. So uh, Novum uh, shared this project, so we played with it also during that, during that webinar and showed all the uh, uh, features of, uh, of a design like this. Okay, let's go to the Nordics. Um, you know the BIG, the, the biggest architecture, uh, well, one of the most traditional architectural offices. They partnered up with Rambol to do Kistefos Museum uh, in Sweden, uh, hope, hope I'm not uh, mistaken, and did, that required very complex uh, connections to satisfy the the need for beauty of that structure. So, uh, <laughs> Rumble was uh, was able to deliver that uh, and deliver that in a, a reasonable time frame and cost. So until now, it was more uh, structural engineers. Fortman Steel Group is one of the biggest steel fabricators in Europe. They're based in Netherlands. And uh, they, they have incredible uh, production facility, uh, which uh, is able to produce everything for a desired steel structure. And they know their business, and they know how, how, it, uh, how much uh, does it uh, cost them to make a uh, uh, flange thicker, wider, uh, and they, they ran uh, numerous tests how to uh, compare idea static with what they have. And they are able to save uh, units or tens of euros on every piece they produce. And uh, those savings go into a very, a very appealing benefit for, uh, uh, for their customers, Fortman as a group, and also the engineers who work with it inside because it's just more fun. This is from Turkey, uh, one uh, 
uh, new development, a huge shopping mall with, uh, with this roof structure which uh, is very typical to have non-standard connections in terms of geometrial loading. So Galplan, uh, one of the biggest Turkish engineering offices, was able to, uh, to get the design done. I'm not sure about the general analysis, if it was ETAPS here, oh, I'm going to have to check. All right, one from, uh, from Germany, uh, a bus station, it might seem like an easy structure to do, but uh, uh, this, uh, even this type of structure has tricky joints. So uh, engineering office like, they used idea Statica just, just to design all the connections, not just the easy ones, but also the ones like this analyzing the interactions and uh, getting the, uh, the job done uh, in a very reasonable time frame. Okay? And we will be happy if the next time we can show something from Lithuania. Okay? <laughs> and all those, uh, all those customers there, uh, they, they've been with us for uh, quite some time and they've been, they've been very honest about the software that, okay, uh, we can calculate, uh, the, we're breaking the limits of topology, but you need to change and improve this, 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 all the modeling, you need to use the, the 3D scene better and all that. And uh, this has been going for, uh, for, uh, for some time and uh, led to our latest release. Actually, on 6th of April, we released the version 9, which we are already showing today. And this was a result of uh, hundreds of discussions with, uh, with those big engineering offices and also small uh, individual engineers who were saying like, yes, let's improve this. And the new UI was, uh, uh, was based on all this. It was, it was made from the customer feedback, mostly for the, for the redesign of the, how the application looks. And a specific request, do the simple connections faster. Because the, the engineers kept telling us, okay, I couldn't do the complex anywhere else, so I'm doing the complex, but I need you to do the simple ones in a similar way I do in my Excel spreadsheets. So that's why the, all the templates Philip showed and all the, all the predefined examples. Then the, the big improvements uh, in the latest version, the BIM workflows, as, as we've shown, and some more uh, stuff we're, we're going to talk about. So uh, the, uh, the request was let's make it very straightforward. Uh, when somebody opens the application, he should just go right through. So we've redesigned the UI uh, to this, uh, uh, to this uh, opening wizard, which in those three steps defines class, uh, topology, design, and gets you very, very close to, uh, to the, the final design. And you can, ch can choose the code uh, and uh, continue uh, modeling it. We've uh, actually follow the way of Tecla <clears throat> to start using the ribbons on the top. Uh, again, for the same reason, when people use it together, just, just line it a little bit. Uh, now the 3D scene is, mu is much bigger and we show the results right away in, in a top left, uh, top left corner. So you know all the time if it's, if it's okay, it's okay or not. You can select any member, and just with the right mouse button, uh, edit welds, bolts, blades, uh, add templates very quickly. Uh, the predefined, uh, predefined ones and new can be uh, created. Okay. Uh, all right, we also uh, want to make uh, the software, in the words of our customers, it has to be. Uh, error proof that and some engineers were very honest with us I have some junior colleagues and I need you to make sure that they don't do anything stupid with it okay so uh, based on all this feedback we've implemented a lot of uh, warnings that just uh, uh, checks not just the calculation itself but design principles so for example the singularity check uh, if uh, if uh, the members are long enough to, to be analyzed. So all, all of that is automatic and if something is suspicious, something is fishy, uh, the model is not started or uh, it just tells you that there's, a, there's an error you should, uh, you should look, uh, look into. Okay, and uh, we can uh, look into one more example. All right, I'll take this, uh, this connection to to show how quickly we can do it. <clears throat> uh, 
So, <clears throat> for last time in connections, let me go for a new project where I will start with uh, some general one without a template, like that. And this is what I get. <clears throat> to show you a few things, which I on purpose didn't show in previous presentations because obviously I wouldn't have anything to talk about right now. Uh, so, uh, as it has been mentioned, we are trying to work with a 3D scene much, much more right now. So, for instance, while I click on the member B, uh, click on the right mouse button, and I click Connect to, now I just need to select which part I want to connect to, and it will uh, give me some recommendation which I want to use. So, for instance, let's use this end plate with the, with the ribs or wideners. Maybe you can make uh, both bigger like that, or maybe they are too big, so I can play again, click on them, say they, they will be much smaller, like that, and I can play with that. So this is how I can really fastly connect uh, the members. Of course, uh, you have seen that I could define it uh, in this way still, so if I use the stiffener, I could use it like that. Uh, I can uh, adjust, for example, just thickness here. I don't need to go right into the menu. Also, the editor for all the plates is here. So if I want to change something, uh, okay. So, for instance, I can I can relate it to member B, and uh, of course, I can I can add an operation like like opening, and uh, you can see it, it was uh, placed somewhere like a default value. There is a uh, nice, nice uh, new uh, peak functionality. So I just click on the specific part and it will appear here. Or I want it here. You, you can see it's, it's very easily done. So I can just move it to the middle and so on. Or uh, I can just, I don't know, clean that one. And again, I can connect that again. Let's say there will be some cleat connection like that. Yeah, you can see uh, these templates are still not parametri parametrical, but uh, we are working on that. But uh, you now have uh, some common sense how fast you can, can design these types of connections. Uh, and of course, once you do that, uh, you can just run the calculation. Of course, I have no uh, internal forces there, so let's place some and hit the calculate button. So you can see that in a matter of few seconds, I have changed the, uh, the join three times, and I have been able to do all of that. And uh, okay, uh, we have mentioned that we have many. Uh, new templates in the uh, in wizard. Of course, uh, when you use these BIM links, we didn't mention, it was also in previous versions, that we have uh, these templates. So let me just clean the whole, the whole project, like that. Uh, of course, you can create your own templates. So once you do that, you can use them. So for instance, I don't know, something like that. And if you uh, face similar project next time, the template can be loaded as well, so you don't need to define it again. It means that if you are using your connection for hundreds of times, it, it saves uh, a much or lots of time. And of course, you can also copy the project. So here you can make a copy to make a few adjustments or just change uh, the type of analysis and so on. So this is a very nice example how we can work in uh, this new environment. Uh, anything else which we mentioned from new new UI? I guess that's that's it. That's, that's it. it. Yeah. All right. And I will add some more uh, news from the latest version, so you know what's going on. And. Right. The BIM links, yes. The, there was the big request to not work with just one connection, uh, but uh, to link it with the Tecla model or a model of robot structural analysis. So 
So we've created something we call Connection Manager, as, as Philip showed, and we are able to finally uh, link the models so uh, we can synchronize them. If you create something in Tecla, you go to IDEA Statica, uh, and then, uh, then you want to change something, or you go from Robot and to IDEA Statica. So it looks like this. The uh, let's say the possible optimization process. You start in uh, in uh, a robot or uh, or RFM. You go to idea, uh, you go to idea Statica at the manufacturing operations. You run the code check, and then there are two options. It fails, so you have to change, or you want to optimize. So if you in any of these cases, you go back to your original model. Uh, you change it. You just click update. Uh, and recalculate in idea static. Uh, so you, you do this uh, uh, automatically, you don't have to export uh, uh, every time again. And once you finish the process, uh, you finish the report with, a, with optimal design. Uh, similar for uh, uh, the CAT optimization workflow, you have a model in Tecla or Advanced Steel, you export it to idea static, uh, you input the loads, you run the, you run the analysis, if the code check passes and you are happy, you go to report. If you want to change, you go back to Tecla. You make the changes, add bolts, uh, add welds, just update, and uh, no need to input the loads again. You just uh, uh, you just play with different um, options until you get to the actual final design. All right. Uh, we're receiving a lot of. Uh, uh, requests for very specific features. One of the one of the very uh, uh, popular was we need a Microsoft Word dots export or an, and a clear button for PDF. So that's what we did in the last version. So you can get it to to Word and just uh, feed it into what you need for uh, for your documentation. We keep adding and improving manufacturing operations. Stop is the uh, is, the, is the latest update. Uh, how to work better with it. And we want uh, also to spread the word, so we've uh, implemented a, a very scientific feature which allows you to share what you've just modeled on uh, your LinkedIn or Facebook. <laughs> so whatever there is on, on your screen, you can just click on, uh, uh, on that and it will, it will post it on your social media account. And thanks for that in advance. <laughs> Uh, we've improved some things in the uh, in the anchoring, uh, uh, and also a lot of stuff for the AIC for the US code, and uh, uh, minor improvements in in the meshing. This basically meant redoing uh, all the documentation for the software. It's just uh, we we made big change, but uh, that that meant that we had to uh, align. All the resources. Uh, Jesus, I, I'm just not able to. Ideas, statica. All right. So when you come to ideastatica.com, uh, there is a section resources, okay, which you can access also. This is the home application installed on your computer. And uh, I'll just let me switch that to. English to no, it's, so. it's switched, but I just need to restart it. Yeah. Right. All right. So when you run it from the desktop, it always uh, gives you the quick access to our applications. We'll do the concrete after the coffee break. You have the latest news. So uh, we've just uh, uh, yesterday we've uh, did the reminder that version nine is already released, so all the uh, all the customers know. So you get the news right away in the in the product. Uh, and you got a tab online resources, which actually goes to uh, to the uh, to the website. Okay, so when you when you come here, either from that or this direction, and you click on resources, you get to uh, Idea Static Resource Center, and uh, this is by application. So I want to do tutorials for connection, and I'm working in Eurocode. So I will click on that, and I will see the uh, all the examples. I will choose what I want to do. Uh, maybe take a look in buckling a little bit. So here is the project with the source file, and I can print it out. And step by step uh, process how to how to do it. 
if I'm interested in some sample projects I want to download and test right away uh, I can go through them and uh, looking for past webinars for a specific topic it's all here the upcoming webinars are at the, at the website actually today we're doing a release webinar for version 9 so our colleagues are starting in uh, three hours yes it's uh, yeah in three hours and you're you're getting the live stuff you're getting the live stuff and you can see the upcoming all the upcoming things if you're interested in the actual yes all the release notes uh, what, what what we do so you keep track with the, with the new versions and uh, verification I'm interested how it how it works according to the euro code so we've uh, we've had some of the verification examples published here so you can go uh, and examine that how, how it uh, how it works all right